This child-ready phone is protected by remote parental controls. Let's check it out. Dave Taylor here, and I want to talk about phones and children. Generally not a great equation. So 63% of parents believe that the time they, their children spend online is negatively impacting their health. And 66% of children report that they have had experiences with cyberbullying or other harmful online activities. So yes, your kid probably wants to keep up with all the other kids and get a phone when they're in first grade or some other really remarkably early age. But I think it's really important as modern parents in a digital age to set guardrails and controls and manage the whole experience so that you're confident and know that your child isn't getting up at two in the morning to play games or texting with some adult that you don't even know. I mean, there's so many alarming things that can be happening. They could just be bullying other kids. There's so much that happens that's behind the scenes that we don't see. And with three kids of my own, I can tell you if you say, I would like to go through your phone now and see what's going on, there's a lot of resistance. So having the ability to go ahead and manage all of that remotely is pretty darn slick. And that's what I have here. This is the Samsung Galaxy A15 5G Android phone with protection by MM Guardian mobile phone parental controls. So the phone itself looks exactly the same. This came from MM Guardian with cell service from US Mobile. I'll come back to that in a little bit. And then my iPhone, I actually have set up as the parent phone. So I go into my iPhone and I get all sorts of controls. More importantly, I also get updates and notifications. So if someone I don't like texts my child, I can block that number and see what message they sent them. I can also just monitor all this stuff, but there's also AI in the software and it can do the monitoring. Now, you can install it on iPhones or Android phones, but your best bet is really to get the Android phone directly from MM Guardian, because then it's really deep into the Android operating system, and they have a lot of tamper-proof features. I can't reset this phone to not have their software at this point. In fact, I asked them, I said, well, when we're done, if I want to just go back to having a normal phone, which maybe I would do when my child hits a certain point in maturation, or they demonstrate that they have really good choices that they make, then they said they still have to do that remotely. I can't do that from the parent app. That's how tightly locked down this is. And that's important because you don't want to install an app on their phone that's then easy for them to just circumvent or delete. That obviously is not helpful. So this lets you manage and control the phone remotely. You get detailed activity reports. You have location monitoring that cannot be disabled. You get safety alerts about bullying and drugs and sexting and violence and suicide and online predators. And we parents don't want to think about that. We don't want to think that our poor little middle schooler who's so lovely at home, or maybe really a teenager who's very testy at home, is actually doing a drug deal or being asked by one of their friends, hey man, you want to come party? We have stuff and the AI is smart about this it can even recognize commonly used emoji sequences and warn you that this might be sexting even though it's just emoji and <laughs> especially when you get into things like violence and suicide and unfortunately your child might be part of the problem not a victim so that's also stuff that it would be aware of and it monitors all texts and all social media interaction for compatible apps. You can check out what they're working with today on their website. As I said, it's tamper-proof, but what I really want to do is I want to show you a demo. So I have three phones for the demo. These two, the child phone, the parent phone, and a phone from someone I don't like and I don't want to communicate with my child. So let's do that demo. This is the child phone. This is the Samsung Galaxy A15 from MM Guardian. This is an iPhone. It's the parent phone. So I'm going to go ahead and launch the MM Guardian app. And 
Give me a second, let me try Face ID again. There we go. So now I'm logged into my parent app. I don't have to be, it's always running. And then this is someone who wants to communicate with my child, but I have blocked them. So on this phone, let's go ahead and send a message to the child, and this number is blocked. So I'm just gonna say, hey. And let's watch what happens. So this looks like it was delivered. This doesn't get a notification, but this does. It says, prohibited SMS alert. Please tap here to view details. So it not only shows me the blocked number, but it also shows me that actual message text. Meanwhile, on the child phone, let's go into messages and let's see this child actually has an entry for this person. So you can see possibly the very first message before I blocked it says, hi, buckaroo. And then all of these other messages look like they were delivered, but they weren't. Now let's have our child send a message to this person. Hey, let's send, maybe send, right? So it doesn't send. So what happening, what's happening here is that this is blocked from communicating with this person. So this is ideal. They think that Something's not working, right? That's how it goes. They never get a message. Any message they send never makes it to the child phone, and the parent phone actually gets the notification. This is exactly what you want. Now, let's go back to home screens. And now in the app, let's just look at a couple of things. So first off, we can do device usage. Always start by tapping on get update. So you can see there's five messages, the phone's already been in use for an hour, and that includes, let's see, uh, One UI Home, which is Samsung, and Weather and Samsung Wallet, and call blocking or filtering, no calls have happened, no use of the web. Let's go back here, and where this gets really interesting is that you can get into things like, I'm just gonna lock the phone. So I could just tap on lock now, I could also specify a duration, so for example, you did not clean your room, you now lose use of your phone for an hour. That would be really easy to do without having to touch their phone and without having to go through that. But then we get into phone rules and I can set up time limits for the phone. So we can say, let's see, on weekdays from 9.30 p.m. to 6.30 a.m., we want the phone locked. And on weekends from 11 p.m., to 6 a.m. we want the phone locked. So we're gonna do both. And now super important, send. And send success. So now this phone will automatically lock on those times and it's different on weeknights and weekend nights. Now, ideally you would remember to go ahead and say, oh, <laughs> it's the holidays, let me change this a little bit. But that would be up to you to decide if you wanna do that. And then here you can see like Candy Crush Saga, which is my child's favorite game. I have it blocked so they can't play it at night. So that would be if I decided not to do a full lock, I could do that. And then if we go down here, hair salon is just like this massive time sink. So now on the child phone, let's try to launch hair salon. And it's blocked. So the kid, sorry. <laughs> can't play that, whether they're at school or at home or whatever time of the day it is, I have to close this. So that's blocked, but I can also block things by time, like I said, so Candy Crush Saga, I could block by time. Cat Escape, I can just say, you know what, no. That's another one you're spending way too much time on. Again, send it to the phone, it's successful. And so Cat Escape is also blocked. Sorry, 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 honey. Whereas other games like Yahtzee, hey, you wanna play Yahtzee, you can play Yahtzee. We don't have any problems with that yet. So that's good. Now, let's see what else we can look at here. So that's app control. You can specify your own time limit so you can manage what you consider is a reasonable device bedtime. You can do web filtering. So I can turn on web filtering and I can specify categories or I can specify websites I don't want my child to see. Um, I'm gonna turn that back off. We're not gonna send it because I'm not changing that setting. And contact block, that is blocking this phone. So that's easy enough to set up. 
And that might be something where if there's some cyber bullying or anything like that, that would be where I'd set that up. And then here's text monitoring. So text monitoring is monitoring for things that are common phrases that a predator might ask or a bully might say. Um, and it can also do things like picture analysis. So let's say that my son has a little girlfriend and she likes to send pictures of herself when she's just in her underwear, which is obviously inappropriate and sexting and illegal. And the app can actually notice that and actually you can block that, but it will also save a copy of the photo in the parent app. So I could then go back and review that and then say, yeah, we need to talk to the, her parents too, because this is a bigger issue and it's not okay. And then we get into individual apps and you can specify even more with lock settings and then there's location history. And most importantly, the child can't block any of this. They can't reinstall the Android OS on the Samsung Galaxy A15 or A35 so that it doesn't have any of these filters or anything. And again, the goal here is to keep your child safe. This is all about safety so that they could just use their device and not have to worry about it and it works when it needs to work and then there are some things that at certain times if they get up at two in the morning they can't like jump on to Fortnite for half an hour. So all of that just seems fantastic. It's really, really great. Now, let me jump back on camera. I will admit that the user interface is a little bit tricky to figure out and I even made errors as I did the demo because I haven't spent a lot of time on it, but they have a lot of parents protecting a lot of children on their mobile devices through their software. And as you spend a little more time with it, you'll get the basics down pretty easily. They also have a web-based interface, but I can tell you that probably could do with a facelift and they're aware of that. So it's not the most beautiful user interface. It's probably better just to stick with your parental phone for management. But as you saw, it's really easy to just say, this phone needs to be locked between 11 p.m. and 7 a.m. Or it might have apps that like, you can't play any games during the school time. And it will also you know, capture things like, oh, well, you just installed a new game, but it's automatically still in that category, so it's automatically still blocked. So really they've spent a lot of time and they've been in this field for years and years and they've really understood a lot from user feedback of how kids try to circumvent and sidestep all of these features and their goal is not to take away autonomy and agency from a child their goal is to give you the ability to decide how wide a horizon you want your child to have and this is something you'll change over time if I have a child in elementary school and I give them a phone, which we didn't do for the record, but if I were to give them a phone, I would lock it way down just so they don't have to make that decision. They just know their phone is their friend and it's safe and it's okay and they can text mom and dad anytime they want and they can text Uncle Joe, but that guy Mike, who's a friend of a friend of a friend, yeah, they just don't show up and they can't seem to communicate with them and that's okay. And then as your child gets older and they become more mature and they're more able to make smart decisions, decisions, you can start taking off a lot of these controls and maybe still monitoring things. And then at a certain point, you might turn off all the monitors and alerts and you might say, have at it. And I would like to sit down with you occasionally and talk about what you're doing on your phone. And that's exactly what we did with my children. We didn't give anyone a phone until they were a tween. Actually, no, until I think 13. That was like the big thing when they turned 13 is they got a phone. And then we just had an agreement that we would sit down with them and go through their messages and go through their social media and talk about person by person, who is this person, how do you know them, and why are you communicating with them? And every single time, our children, especially at the beginning, they had friend of a friend of a friend who was someone, they had no idea who this person was and why they were in communication with them. So we would shut those people down together they would understand what had happened. And then over time, I realized that my children were able to do this themselves and to self-regulate, as therapists would say. And so then they had less and less controls until finally it was like, 
do your thing and hopefully it'll go okay. And I'll tell you, it didn't always go okay and we definitely had some issues and there was one time I had to hack into one of my kids' phones to find something that was very alarming that we had to deal with immediately. And had I not have done that, had I have had something like this, that would have been much easier and I would have caught it much earlier. So, uh, just like adults, our kids have this extraordinary device in front of them but it's up to us as parents to make sure they are using it safely. And that's exactly what this is about. So definitely something you should seriously consider and check out for your children's mobile devices. So we should talk price. Before we get there, I'm gonna ask you to subscribe to my channel. Click or tap on that subscribe button. Hit that bell icon for notifications. Give me a thumbs up if you found this valuable and I hope that you did. So. They have two phones that have the MM Guardian app built in, and this is the less expensive of them. This is the Samsung Galaxy A15 5G Android phone. As you can see, it is an entirely capable phone with a big, bright screen. You can watch movies on it. You can play your favorite games. There's so much you can do. It's really fun. And they certainly are not going to feel like a second-class citizen when all their f young friends put down their phones on the table and theirs is like, wow, yours is big, it's cool, right? So it, there's nothing that makes it obvious that they have this monitoring software, which is great. So the A15 through MM Guardian with their software installed is $229. If your child needs or you want to get them a more capable phone, they also offer the Samsung Galaxy A35 at $339, and that's a faster phone. It's a nicer phone. But again, you know, if we're talking like a fourth or fifth or sixth grader, how much phone do they really need to be able to be functional in their young lives? Something to consider. And then the MM Guardian service is $9.99 a month in addition to the cost of the hardware. You can learn about all of their pricing and options at mmguardian.com. I do want to also mention that this phone has cell service through US Mobile, which is a MM Guardian partner, and it is $10 a month for cell service that includes unlimited text, talk, 4G and 5G access, and two gigabytes of data per month, which is a whole heck of a lot less than I'm paying with AT&T. So all told, that this would be a 229 investment and then 20 bucks a month for my child to have cell service and for me to have the peace of mind knowing that I'm able to monitor and keep track of what the heck they're doing. And that is worth a lot. And in this day and age, it's up to us to keep our children safe because you don't wanna be one of those stats. You want your child to go blissfully through their childhood without any major stresses. So. That's all I got. I hope this was of value to you and I'm happy to see you in my next video.